had foggy brain, you had difficulty processing, and you had changes in your speech, and it might not be like super slurred speech where you're like, is he drunk, right? You know, not like that. It's more of like, I'm trying to say this word and I'm not saying it right, or it's not coming to me, or I'm saying the, the ending or the beginning of the word the wrong way, right? Um, if you are, if you've experienced a major trauma, you might have uh, flashbacks or nightmares, or you might have the uh, racing thoughts or uncontrollable thoughts. Um, it's gonna change your mood where you'll feel frustrated, angry, anxious, or irritable. You'll feel apathetic, and that's meaning you just don't feel like moving, I don't feel like doing nothing, I don't have no motivation. Like, I, I won't, even if I do want to get up and move, like my body is, just, I just don't have it in me to move, just not working, right? It could cause you to have what's called a flat affect. The affect is your, is your facial expression, just your ability to show people that you're happy or that you're sad. When people have a flat affect, you can't see what's going on with them. It's just like a blank stare. Um, and you see that a lot with um, depression and other uh, mental illnesses. Um, headaches, frequent headaches, migraines, mood swings, Sometimes you 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 fighting you trying to you trying to be in a uh, you know in a um, in a positive state and then you start thinking about you know how bad things are to you or whatever you have that ineffective coping your mood is just up and down and I'm telling you right now when you like that you hard to deal with right mm -hmm. I'm just telling you that's just who you are you might have some loved ones that are like that where you like I don't know what I'm gonna get today. Right, mm -hmm. so you might want to stay away. That's how people, and if, if you in this situation, that's how people feel about you, right? Um, feeling overwhelmed and then having memory loss. Um, this is one of the things that first things that I started noticing within myself um, was I would be going to the <coughs> cooking, go to the pantry, and I forget why I was in the pantry. And I'd be sitting there, like, I know I came here for something, go back to the stove. Now, what was it? Mm -hmm. I literally had to start back from like, okay, well, I was cooking, I was cooking, blah, 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 and just trying to figure out, like, how did, you know, excuse my language, how did I end up in this, this pantry? You know, um, there was times where I'd be driving down the road, and I'd look up and I'd be like, where am I going? Right? You know, that is, that's stress. Um, so you can have uh, memory loss, short term memory loss, um, a lot with that. Next slide. So, now, we done, I done showed y'all all that stuff that can happen, right? We done talked about all that stuff. Who thinks it's important to set themselves up to avoid that? Yeah. Everybody yeah. in here. Yeah. Everybody, right? You want to avoid getting to that level. Some of you may already be there. What I chose to do is, on that last slide, what I chose to do was show you the symptoms of the mental illness instead of listing what it is. And the reason why is because if you see the symptoms, you're more likely to see yourself in those symptoms. But if I put up depression, anxiety, PTSD, OCD, or uh, you know, yeah, OCD, you might be like, uh-uh, that ain't me. It's an automatic, unconscious thing that we do because we don't want to accept that this is our reality. Okay, but if you saw yourself having any of those symptoms that we had, I highly encourage you to really consider talking to somebody about it because it's really only going to get worse. Yeah. Okay, so what I want to do is make sure that you know it's extremely important to have a self care plan. And I know that um, for some people in our community, um, uh, finances is the barrier or I'm gonna say it's an excuse for some people. I ain't stepping on nobody's toes, but let's be real. Because a lot of people spend money on stuff that don't matter. They're like I said, <laughs> money you spend on your nails, your hair, your wigs, and all that other kind of stuff, but you can't invest. That book right there is 25 cents a day. That book right there, that journal I have is 25 cents a day. And people will look past the cost of that, but will spend money on cigarettes and all that other stuff is killing them. You know what I'm saying? So you have to be willing to really invest in yourself, okay? And you can't expect nobody else to take care of you and to um, to support you, but you're not willing to do it for yourself. It's it's just not it's just not fair. It's not fair to your loved ones for you to not take care of yourself and then expect them to carry the burden for you, okay? So this is stuff that is pretty much free that you can do to help take care of yourself. A lot of this stuff on here, so. I have setting goals and work to achieve them at the top because um,
science says that if you actually have a goal, you're working towards your purpose and you can actually achieve them, it, it gives you positive emotions, but it increases your motivation to continue to go out and do more and more, right? So you have a sense of fulfillment, um, you have a sense of purpose, it increases your uh, what's called self-efficacy, which is your ability to uh, believe that you can actually do something, because a lot of people in our community, they struggle with that. Um, their confidence and their ability to do something. So setting goals and work to achieve them, it don't matter what the goal is, it don't matter if you can just set one goal, one small goal a week and actually, you know, work to achieve it. Even if you don't get it all the way done, measure your progress and celebrate your successes. Um, building mental agility, and that's through like reading puzzles, reading, doing puzzles, playing chess, stuff like that. That might not seem like a big deal, but when you actually do those things, it actually wars off Alzheimer's and dementia, okay? So, you know, like I said, it's a lot of older people in here, you know, that is very common uh, for people closer to your age. So read, do puzzles, do chess, anything that stimulates your mind, you're gonna ward off dementia and Alzheimer's. Frequent exercise, um, I know that might be a little challenging for some people, but you ain't got to pay for, well, y'all have to watch. I'm going to say you ain't got to pay for it, Jill, but I'm just saying, you, if you got access to the wild, no excuses, no regrets, right? No excuses, no regrets. No excuses, no regrets, okay? If you got access to that gym, get down there in that gym. Um, water aerobics is easy on the body. Um, I love water aerobics. It's easy on the joints. I have a lot of issues with my knees and hips and stuff like that, so I do yoga, I do uh, water aerobics. I ride my bike. Riding your bike is the fastest way to lose weight, and it's easy on your joints. Um, and I love it because it don't feel like I'm actually exercising. I get out there, ride up the mountain, and I'm sightseeing. I get to spend time with my family. Like you know, it's stuff that you can do that is not as um, ex uh, uh, extensive or uh, strenuous to you um, um, that can help you out. Yoga. Yoga is really good. Yoga helps out with flexibility. Um, keeps you from having hip injuries, knee injuries. We got a lot of that going on in our community. Um, helps out with um, um, being able to uh, regulate your mind. So we have a lot of self-regulation and Tai Chi is the same way. Um, tai Chi is highly recommended for uh, people in the older generation. Um, spending time with your loved ones, right? We know life is, life is short, you know, and we never know from a day-to-day -day basis who's gonna be here and who's not. So, you know, Put all that foolishness behind you. Got an issue with your family? Go spend time, make amends, love on each other, um, and find ways to laugh together. Um, laughing actually <laughs> releases dopamine. That's that feel-good hormone in your body, and it actually changes all the stuff, those, those uh, bad chemicals, I ain't gonna call them bad, but the chemicals that, that causes, that's released with stress, dopamine is the, the chemical that, um, that comes to combat that. Make sure you manage your time and you get enough sleep. I say managing your time because if you're a procrastinator like me, you know what it feels like when you're stressed out, right? You're like, ah, oh, shoot, dang it, I forgot, forgot X, Y, and Z when I'm at home. Always pushing yourself up against the limit. That's stress. It's unnecessary stress. Mm -hmm. So be organized, manage your time well, make sure you get proper rest. Proper rest is at least eight hours. We know that's hard to do because our system is not set up to support us to actually get the rest that we need. But we have to find time to get our rest, or it's gonna take a toll on us. Um, make sure you have healthy boundaries. Now this is a big one, especially if you have uh, large families that you're taking care of. If you decide right now that, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure I start doing something for me. You the go-to, but I can guarantee you this, if you, you know, I'm gonna say, if you got them all, they gonna figure it out. <laughs> They can figure it out. That's right. So you, if you don't respect your time and if you don't respect your body, ain't nobody else going to do it. So if you say, you know what, I love y'all, love I want to support y'all, I want to help y'all out, but I have decided that from 8 to 10 on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I'm going to be taking my walks. Mm -hmm. So if y'all need something between it, y'all got to figure it out. Guess what? The rest of that family, they're going to figure it out. Okay? So don't make no excuses. For yourself, have your healthy boundaries. <laughs> Do not be afraid to say no. Okay? When you get overwhelmed and you're a humanitarian like me, it's real hard to say no. And then you get to the point where you're like, nobody's listening to me. I, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I'm burnt out and I'm stressed and I can't take it no more. And then I start saying, well, I can't do this. But you know what? When people are used to you always stepping up to the plate, they're going to hear you say no, but guess what they're going to do? They're going to still push. 
Because they're, they're going to be like, I still have my needs that I need to get met. That's not your problem. Okay? That's not your problem to be the savior of everybody. Your problem is to take care of yourself because if you don't, how you, you ain't going to be no good to nobody. Okay? So don't be afraid to set your healthy boundaries. Set your self-care plan. Decide what you're going to do. Tell people ahead of time and let them figure out how to plan and take care of their lives outside of you. Let me what you put in your body. We know alcohol and drugs. Y'all know that ain't good for us. But food, right? Caffeine and sugar actually does exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. And it takes an effect on the, uh, the, uh, the uh, pancreas. And when you are really stressed, it actually increases your risk of having uh, type 2 diabetes. Okay? So be careful about what you put in there. I wish my grandmother was still around. My grandmother used to have a garden and we see all this clean, healthy food. Now we gotta go to the grocery store and get all this trash they feeding us. But if y'all know how to garden and grow your own stuff, think what y'all supposed to be eating, right? Don't be putting all that butter and grease and all. Look, we gotta come away from the pork. I, that's gonna keep it real. Cause that pork is killing us. It's clogging up our arteries, and that's why we got high blood pressure, high cholesterol. You can use smoked turkey instead of pork, and your food will still taste good. You can stop using so much butter and just use different seasonings, because that's our problem. We so used to using the same seasonings, that's what we're used to our food taste like, but you gotta be willing to change your palate to like what you need, okay? Um, massages, acupuncture, or Reiki, or Reiki. That's good stuff, but everybody ain't into it. But I'm telling you, it'll change your life if you actually did those. Number one thing I'm gonna tell you to do: if you have any of those symptoms that we that I showed you before, please don't be afraid to talk to a therapist or a counselor. Okay? You want people that's giving you advice and that's supporting you who are quick to give you advice and to support you. When you don't have a therapist or a counselor and you're relying on other people, it's burdening your relationships. Okay, you don't want to be the person that everybody's avoiding a call because every time they call you, you got something negative to say, right? Because you caught up in your own feelings and your own life and you're not utilizing what you need. Don't be that person and don't be afraid. If you want a therapist and, you, and you're scared of it, do your, your due diligence and call and find what you need. And I will tell you, there's a movement to, to, to get more black therapists and black healthcare providers, period. But I'm gonna tell you right now, I've had both. I've had white and I've had black. I've had some black um, therapists that didn't sit well with me. I've had black doctors that didn't sit well with me. Do your due diligence. My, my therapist I have now, she's white. And you know, I love her because she takes care of me. So find what you need. You know, if it's a black provider, get one. But if it ain't, don't be afraid to step out there and get the support you need. Grounding in nature, that's just taking walks, going out, being amongst the trees, getting in fresh air and everything like that. Cultural or creative arts activities, I love poetry. I love listening to live music. I love being out amongst my people, feeling good, you know, just experiencing culture. That stuff, and especially during the summertime, there's a lot of free uh, entertainment going on around the city. But that stuff makes you feel good, okay? You have to invest in things that are making you feel good instead of just doing your day-to-day, -day, you know, you're doing the same thing day-to-day -day, and you're not really growing as an individual. Budget, save, and invest. This is a big problem in our community. We are not financially responsible, okay? Uh, and some of it is our fault, but some of it ain't, right? So I'm gonna challenge you, make sure you're on top of your, your, uh, your, your, bud, your finances, because when you're not, you're burdening other people around you to figure it out, okay? And when you ain't got your money all the way together, how many of y'all stressed out when you ain't got your money together? I don't know. Right? So deep breathing exercises, this actually uh, stimulates a part of the brain that's normally not active with day-to-day -day, um, just day-to-day -day activities. So when you're doing deep breathing exercises and practicing mindfulness and meditation, that's just like um, sitting still, um, doing your deep breathing, that's focusing on things that are um, like your goals, or like where you want to be in life, what, how do you want to be better as a human being and like what are the things that you need to do to get there? You're gonna meditate um, spiritually. You know, sometimes people use religion to meditate. Meditation is not always about religion, but religion can be a guide for meditation, okay? And then become self-aware through self-reflection. You are not going to implement any of these things if you do not spend time becoming self-aware. You cannot become self-aware if you do not spend time in self-reflection, okay? Every day. Make it your business at least five minutes a day to think about how your day went, 
All right, think about what you did well. Think about what you can do different, right? Think about the relationships or the interactions that you're having it with others. Think about your goals, right? If you don't spend time thinking, you're not gonna be self-aware of what your, your triggers are, what your stress, how to avoid them. You're not gonna be able to hold yourself accountable to doing things that are gonna make you a better human being and decrease your stress, okay? And I have a journal that, that helps you do that that focuses on accountability, okay? Next slide. So why is self-care important? Because it's part of the <coughs> preventative health maintenance. It helps you to effectively cope to stress. It builds your resilience. It helps build your self-efficacy. Remember that's your confidence and your ability to be able to do something. Um, builds your accountability, because if you don't hold yourself accountable to your self-care plan, then guess what? You're gonna be having the same thing going on with you, same stress level, or even worse than where you are today. And we wanna walk away better than what we are. Um, creates a healthy and balanced life, and like I said, it decreases the burdens that you place on your loved ones. Next slide. So, my aha <coughs> moment, or your aha moment. Does anybody care to share one of these three, these things? So what will you do differently and why? What will you continue to do? You might already be on top of yourself. <coughs> Homeboy back here that goes to the gym, that's so dope. You know, I, I get so inspired when I see um, people older than me taking care of their business. My father's 65, he goes to the gym every day, <coughs> boxes, two hours a day. He had diabetes, he had high blood pressure, and he didn't want to be taking insulin shots, so he started working out every day. He don't take none of that. You know, and I, I just get inspired when I see you because if you can do it, there ain't no excuse for me. You know, so appreciate that. And then one person that you feel like is in need of this information that we talked about today, I want you to go share it with them. I'm gonna open the floor because I talked about it. Anybody want to share? Yeah, I think I'll, I'll, I'll do this. I'll go with one of them. Okay. Uh, the, the top one. Okay. Uh, what will you do differently and why? I think. I don't do enough self-reflection during the day. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, they talk about meditation and, and kind of just breathing and kind of thinking about things, but I don't think I reflect on how the day went. Mm -hmm. um, you know, did I improve? Did I do anything better? You know, what can I do better? Did I, you know, do anything towards my goals or whatever? Mm -hmm. I don't do any of that. I think I just, I go through the motions. Uh, I'm in a routine, you get up, you do certain things, and then by the time the day's over, where you realize you didn't even think about yourself. Right. So I think I'll take a little bit more time whether it be at lunch or at work or whatever, but just take a few minutes to just sit down and just think about, you know, what I've accomplished, what I still need to do, but, you know, what I, I the positive stuff, more or less, to kind of keep myself motivated to keep going. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anybody else? Go ahead. I just um, been thinking about the half empty, half full. I'm trying to look at my glasses half full versus being half empty and just you know, taking one day at a time and being positive, just knowing that I'm still here, I'm still making it, you know, but I suffered from major depression for years and years and years, and, and I know it takes a toll on my whole being, you know. Yeah. Thank you for your vulnerability. I I'll probably say for me, I'll continue to, I'll do the second one, so I'll continue to focus on my mental health. So currently right now, I'm, I see a therapist or a mental health coach. I talk to her like once a month. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really helped me, uh, especially being a black man. I'm so used to kind of holding everything in and not being vulnerable and just letting that stress build up and then eventually it overflows and blows up. So just continuing to talk to my therapist and just letting all that stuff out with her and that way I'm not holding it all in and inter you know in internalizing it. So I'm gonna continue to do that. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Well, you know, after looking at everything that you said, is that, you know, uh, I had an in-depth moment where I thought about everything that you've said, and that part of the thing that you said applied to me because, uh, you know, uh, I'm a recovering person from basically in strokes. And of course, I had, I was worried about everybody else, and I wasn't doing what I needed to do for myself, and internally, I brought about all the stress upon myself. And so I can now share with everyone that 
you know, it's important that you take care of yourself. You know, I I ate all the wrong things because I was trying to pacify myself, and and now I've come to this all a moment after the doctor said I had 10 strokes. And now, who do I want to share these things that I feel that were wrong with me? And I can look back and I can see how I was, I was worried about every little bitty thing, whether it was, uh, you know, uh, chronic or, or lifestyles and everything, but uh, traumatic. I was worried about everything, everything, I mean, you know, if uh, I seen dust in the corner, I was, oh, you know, I'd be worried about it. Uh, and everything I was concerned about. So therefore, I had to basically let go of and start to think in terms of what is best for me. I had to invest in me totally and completely. <coughs> well, now I'm at a point now, I totally invest in me, yeah. the most important thing. Go ahead, Mom. I had something happen today early morning, and I thought I was managing my son that's on a drug addiction. And this young man and this girl, he was there on something, and he was going through uh, all these changes. He was over in the weeds, and we'd get him out and waiting on the police to come, and it was about myself, not seeing this young man, but seeing my son. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't shake it. And this had gone on for at least an hour and a half. And the police had come and wouldn't pick take in, and um, it was just, oh, you know, I've never seen anybody go through something like this. Mm -hmm. Beating themselves and taking their clothes off. And, mm -hmm. It was several of us trying to help me because the girl was begging us to call the police. Mm -hmm. And I finally had to call my book club because we are a book club and we're a praying book club. Mm -hmm. And I told them about the young man. I said, well, please pray for me because I'm not dealing with this. Mm -hmm. And I went in and took my blood sugar. It was almost 200. Mm -hmm. I was shaking. And my heart was beating fast. And I said, well, you gotta get yourself together. Mm -hmm. And shortly after I talked to my book club, I could feel myself um, feeling better because I knew they were gonna stop whatever they was gonna do and pray for me. Mm -hmm. And I never considered therapy, mm -hmm. although my children, both my children are therapists. Mm -hmm. And I never thought I needed it. One has a doctorate and all of that, but I think after going through this, it's what I experienced today, I do know I possibly need some help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and I'm, I, if, if your children are there, but they might be able to recommend somebody that um, they think would be a good fit for you. Um, and if you don't, I know, um, I don't know if you're part of the Health Net family or whatnot, but they have resources downstairs that can help get you connected to somebody to be able to support you. But I'm glad that you were able to, like I said, I, I was intentional about not naming what the, the illness or the disorder is because people will automatically be like, nah, that ain't me. Mm -hmm. But if you see yourself, you see those symptoms, that it's likely you. Like what you were talking about, that's obsessive compulsive where you like dust in the corner. And I do that, I, I check my door three times before I go to bed. And I'm like, Robin, you've already checked it in my mind. I'm like, but I'm so nervous. I'm worried about somebody coming in breaking in my house. And you know, so I go and I do the same things over and over again. It's the same thing. So I was intentional about, like I said, not naming it, just so that you could see yourself and, and, and recognize if that's who you are and get the help that you need. So thank you for that. Yeah. Anybody else? That's it. Well, let's go to the next slide. Uh, um, any questions or comments? <coughs> questions? No. So yeah. um, you can go to the next slide. So I just um, I put my information up here about um, uh, opportunities to learn more about the services I provide. Like I said, I'm a holistic <laughs> wellness uh, coach. I have a health coaching um, program that's centered on mental health um, and combating uh, stress and trauma, and being able to recognize how stress and trauma impacts every domain of your life. 
Um, it's called the nine domains of wellness. So um, I have um, a, a, a clipboard back there if you're interested in learning more about um, the services that I provide. I'll, I'll be having surgery here pretty soon, so I'm not doing anything for the rest of the year, but 2024, I'm also a yoga teacher. Uh, I am certified to teach what's called kinetic yoga, which is yoga centered on um, uh, movements and uh, concepts that's essential to the ancient Africans or ancient Egyptians. So um, I do have uh, that uh, certification as a kinetic yoga teacher, and then I also uh, am a certified sound uh, healer, which um, uses like, I don't know if you guys are familiar with like the Tibetan uh, bowls or crystal bowls that emanate sound and stuff like that, that actually help you move into a meditative state. Cause I have, I have a problem with my mind racing when I try to sit still and try to meditate. So I use sound healing to usher me into meditation. It helps me to relax um, and, and um, just get myself back to center. So. I have a um, certification to do that. Um, if you are interested in the journal, the journal, like I said, it covers 120 days. It's an accountability tool for you to uh, be in, um, intentional about your self-care. Um, and what we do is allow you to um, choose from one of the nine domains of wellness to work on for the day. You set a goal um, specific to that domain, and then you, um, consider the things that you need to do in order to achieve that goal for the day. So, for instance, if I wanted to uh, go to yoga, my goal would be to um, uh, register for a class, if that's what it was. Or, you know, make sure I have my yoga mat, because I, I get, had to go out and buy a whole bunch of yoga stuff when I started getting into it. So it's like, what do you need to actually achieve the goal that you set that's specific towards um, wellness um, in each of the nine domains? Um, if you are interested in purchasing heads, $30 um, may sound like a lot, but like I said, we invest in a whole bunch of other stuff that doesn't get you to the next level. Um, and if you, if you look at that, it covers 120 days, that's 25 cents a day um, that you will be willing to invest into yourself. So that's just information. Um, we do have a credit card reader, or you can pay via Venmo, <coughs> PayPal, Chase, um, Zelle, or Cash App. And that's information about my website. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be in the back. Thank you. Thank you.